Let's become an archer by adding a custom bow to Minecraft. Alright, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a custom bow to Minecraft. Overall, the actual adding of the item is very, very straightforward. However, there is one thing and that is the animation that plays when you start basically pulling the bow. That is the thing that is trips up a lot of people because there is a very specific thing that you have to do and I, I think that not a lot of people know about it. So here we are to clear everything up. First of all, we're going to just register the actual bow. So in the mod items class, we're just going to copy over the data tablet. And this is going to be the cowpen underscore bow. And then of course, right here is actually going to be the cowpen bow. So honestly, let's do it here cowpen bow as well without the underscore that's going to be fine. Now this is going to be a bow item. And this is going to have a durability Let's just put it at 500, something like this. That is the item actually registered. That's all that we need to do for the item. Now we could say, well, let's just add the item model JSON file, the texture, and then we're done. Well, not quite. We're not quite done. Because in the util package, we actually now want a new Java class, and that's going to be the mod item properties. And this is exactly what you're going to need. So you're going to need a custom item property. What we're going to do is we're going to press shift twice, and we're going to search for the item properties class. If you don't find it here, just click this, you know, little include non project items button. And then here it is in net Minecraft client renderer item. And then right in here, we have everything we basically need for this. And we can actually go down and we should find very fast the pull right here, you can see register items bow with a pull here. And then we have register bow with pulling. So overall, you can see there are the items that also have some of those item properties and the item properties are similar to the block state properties as in they change the model of the item so that it has a different texture for so for example you can see the clock of course changes its actual texture depending on the time makes total sense and that's really cool and this is somewhat related to this however of course the block state properties are a little bit different than the uh, item properties in this case. Now in our mod item properties class, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a public static void. And we're going to call this the add custom item properties method. And then I'm actually going to copy over the make bow method because this pretty much just is the same thing as this. So I just copied both of those methods right here, and just added the item properties dot register here at the very front. And then what we just can just do, we can just say make bow mod items dot bow dot get and there is if you have a second bow you can just duplicate this and then just add the second bow right here you can just call this as often as you might need and now the first question of course gets you know that is going to be asked is what is all of this craziness here the general idea is that these are predicates so the idea is that they what is going to happen is they are going to check whether or not something is true so in the item model json file that we're going to create in just a moment we're going to have two predicates. One of them is going to be called pull and one of them is going to be called pulling. And what we're going to check is if they have a certain value, then what we're going to do is if they have a certain value, then we might overwrite the actual item model JSON file with another item model and then just points to a different texture. And the pull here is a, this should be a percentage scale of how far the pull, the bow has been pulled so far. So this basically gets the duration and then the actual ticks how long it still takes to get this item well to use basically. And then the pulling is just uh, you can think of it as a boolean right one or a zero, which basically is true when you start right clicking the bow when you have a either when you're in creative mode or when you have a an arrow inside of your inventory as well. That's the general idea. And we're going to see the actual item model JSON file in just a moment because First of all, what we need to do is we need to call this method right here inside of the tutorial mod class in the client setup. Make sure that this is in the client setup where the FML client setup event is called. And this is going to be the mod item properties dot add custom item properties. That's great. That is pretty much all that we need to do here. And that is the code done. Now let's go on to the JSON files. First of all, just add the translation, of course. It's going to be nothing too crazy here in this case. 
I'm just going to duplicate this. This is the Kalpen bow. And of course, right here, Kalpen bow. There you go. And then the item model JSON files. Now, those are going to be pretty freaking crazy because there are actually going to be four of them. And we're going to see how they look like. So you can first of all see a display. This is just to, well, get the item to display properly. But then the we have the texture. So this is, apart from the display, we have a normal item parent, a normal texture that is pointed to. But then we have this overrides here. And you can see where it's looking for a predicate. It's called pulling. This is exactly this one right here. And if that is one, what we're going to do is that then we're going to overwrite this model that we're currently looking at. So the this Kautenbo model, we're going to overwrite with this model right here. And then we're going to just take a look at this and you can see that this just points to a different texture. So therefore, we're just going to show a different texture. What is very important in these, well, model files is that the parent here is always the one that points to it. So basically, when I say, hey, this model is overridden by this model right here, then the parent is actually the, well, the parent model. It should make intuitive sense in, in some way. Yeah, that is pretty much all that there is to it. If the poll is 65% done, then we're going to choose this model. And then if the poll is done at 90%, then we're going to choose this model. That is really all that there is to it. If you want a completely custom item with those, you know, model item properties, it's going to be kind of hard, definitely. Like, it's not going to be that easy. And you're going to have to take a look at this uh, a few times, especially, of, of course, also with the unmapped parameters here. It's kind of a, you know, it's kind of annoying to see what they are. And, you know, that's going to be uh, another thing. But overall, it is pretty cool. And you can basically make some pretty cool custom looking items with. But for the time being, we're just going to make a bow. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add the four bow textures as well. And that is, of course, in the item folder right here. It's going to add those as well, add them. And that is pretty much all that we need to do to add the custom bow. The real trick here is knowing that you have to use the item properties to register it with the item because how they are doing it is not with the actual bow class. They're actually using a particular item. This is why every time you add a new bow, you have to basically register the item properties again because they're registered on the actual field here and not the class. That is sort of the, well, general overview. But now let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft. And as you can see, the Kauten bow has been successfully added to the game. So now let's see if I start right clicking. There you go. Both the texture in the inventory as well as in the world change. And I can try and hit the cheap. Well, if I can, actually, I don't think I. This is craziness. There you go. Take aim. And that is how easy it is to add a bow that actually works properly and looks properly into the game. Right, all of the code and all of the JSON files are, of course, like always available in the description below in the GitHub repository and in individual gist as well. But otherwise, this would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And special golden thanks go out to MC Arctic for actually supporting me with the gold block tier. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.